الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الحمد لله الذي لا إله إلا هو عالم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد وهو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد وهو الله الخالق البارئ المصور له الأسماء الحسنى يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا ودائيا إلى الله بإذنه سراجا ومنيرا الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في كتاب الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب جعلني مقيم الصلاة ومن ذريتي ربنا وتقبل دعاء ربنا اغفر لي ولوالدي وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إنما الأعمال بالخواطيم الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد All praises are for Allah and we praise Allah and we glorify Allah Al-Ahad the one Allah Al-Awwal the first Allah Al-Akhir the last Allah Al-Khaliq, the Creator. Allah Al-Wadud, the one who extends love to each and every one. Al-Ghani, the rich. Allah Malik, the king, the master, the owner. Allah Al-Ghani, the rich. Allah, my dear brothers and sisters. Lahul Asma Al Husna. To him belongs the most beautiful of names. Allah has sent his beloved Rasul, Habib Allah, Khatim al-Nabiyyin, Rahmatul al-Alameen, Al-Mudathir, Al-Muzammil, Al-Ameen, 
العدل الصادق الطاها الياسين محمد خير النبيين صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. Indeed, Allah has blessed us with Yawmul Eid, the day of Eid, Eid al-Adha, the day of the sacrifice. It is such an Eid, we hear time and time again, that in the sight of Allah it is called Eid al-Akbar. It is the greater of the two Eids between Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. Eid al-Adha is the greater of the two Eids. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, it's a very great day in the sight of Allah. Different from Eid al-Fitr. Eid al-Fitr, it means the celebration and the festival for the breaking and the coming and to the end of the month of Ramadan, the fast. This is why it is called Fitr. Iftar, the breaking of the fast. It ends the fasting period. It breaks off the month of Ramadan. So it is called Eid al-Fitr. Indeed, we know the pleasures that a Muslim enjoys when he breaks the fast. That the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there are two times in the life of a believer. They are the most happiest of times in the life of a believer. One is when he breaks the fast. And the other is when he stands before his Lord Allah. It is a time to celebrate. It is a joyous occasion. It is a happy moment. But Eid al-Adha is something different. What Allah loves on this day, this is not a day for play and fun. This is not a day of joy and merrymaking. It is a day of sacrifice. And that is what Allah loves the most. The sacrifice and the spilling of blood of the sacrificial animals is the act of ibadah that Allah loves the most on this day. So while others might be merrymaking and celebrating in a different style and fashion, our celebration lies with the sacrificing of animals. This is what Eid al-Adha is about. It is about bringing into our lives the, the deeds and the amal and the form of ibadat and worship and sacrifice that Ibrahim Khalilullah had done. Proving his love, proving his obedience, proving his submission to Allah. That whatever Allah asked him, whatever Allah commanded him to do, he was ready to do it. This is where our hearts have to be attached to the Back to Khalil Allah. This did not come and stem from the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No. Allah loved it so much that Allah placed this in this ummah. This is why when the sahabas radiallahu ta'ala anhum, when they says, Ya Rasulullah, Messenger of Allah, ma hadhihi azhiya. What is this sacrificing about? What is this azhiya about? He says, Kana min sunnati. Khaliluka Ibrahim alayhi salam. This is from the sunnah of your forefather Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam. This is where it came from, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. So today, today is a day we need to do certain things. And the first thing that we need to do is to make sure that our niyat and our intention is khalisan lillah. It the it has sincerity and it is filled with sincerity only for the pleasure of Allah. Whatever I'm doing today, my sacrifice that I'm going to do today, it should be only and only for Allah's sake and Allah's pleasure. The first hadith of Imam Bukhari alayhi rahmah, the incident we know it very well. It was the time of hijrah. Many people... They were making the migration from the land of Makkah to Medina because of persecution and torture, hardship. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam given the law by Allah to migrate. People were migrating. 
Some were migrating for the pleasure of Allah, while others were doing it for other reasons. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned, إِنَّمَا الْعَمَلُ بِالنِّيَاتِ You are making a hijrah. You are making a journey. You are making a migration. Know very well that your actions will be judged according to your intention. وَإِنَّ مَا لِكُلِّ مْرِئِمْ مَا نَوَى And for every man will be that which he intended. The reward of your sacrifice will be based upon the niyat and the intention it is done. Am I doing this for sure? Is it a nafsiyat thing? Is it because people would say, wow, that man is performing qurbani. What is the reason? What is the sabab? What is the maqsar and the objective? What is the niyat behind my sacrifice? This is the thing that has to come first and foremost. In every act of ibadat, understand very well. Whether it be salat, whether it be zakat, whether it be fasting, whether it be hajj, look at it and you will see. What comes first is the khalis al niyah. Is the sincerity of niyat Allah is going to reward us for it. Based on that. So the first thing, my dear brothers and sisters, we need to check is our niyah. Manakana hijratuhu lillahi wa rasul. Whoever makes a migration for the pleasure of Allah and His Rasul, for hijratuhu illallahi wa rasul. Then the reward of the hijra, the reward of the migration, subhanallah, is for Allah and the Rasul. Wa manakana hijratuhu illa dunya. Aw imra'atan yatazawwajuha. But whoever makes a hijra, for the world, not for Allah, not for his messenger, to gain the benefits of the dunya, or for some woman to get married to her. For hijratuhu ila ma hajara alayh. Then his hijra, his migration, will be towards what he migrated. So whatever we made the intention for, that is what the rewards is going to come. It's going to come based on how we made our intention. So get our intentions straight. Today. The favors of Allah, my dear brothers and sisters, they are abundant. Allah has given us a lot of things. The Prophet ﷺ for himself, every year he would perform the azhiya. So much so that it is stated in Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, many a hadith that the Rasul ﷺ sacrificed 100 camels. In, at one occasion 100 camels one camel it's divided into seven parts seven people can share it imagine you multiply 100 by 7 700 shares he did it the sahabas they will follow him in those days when you would look you will see that there was never a scarcity or a shortage in any animals just recently we had shortages Animals were becoming scarce. Some of the big mashaikhs and ulamas, they have written that when we don't utilize the bounties and the gifts and the favors that Allah has given to us, Allah is going to take it back from us. And when we look at everything that we have that Allah has given to us, we will see, look at a man, a man who works very hard, but he gathers the wealth, he piles up the wealth, he builds it up, but he's not even using it on himself, on his wife, on his children. He's not even giving to a mosque, he's not spending it at all, he's just piling up, piling up. The day he starts to spend that, it's gone. It's gone, it's finished and he don't even know it. And this is why sometimes we wonder, why I had so much and just over the twinkling of an eye, it's gone. Allah takes it away. The blessing comes in the utilization of that wealth. You have a well and you don't use the water in it. You are, you are feeling that if I use this water, it's going to empty out. Allah causes that very well that is not being utilized to dry up. Allah takes away the bounties and the blessings. When we don't perform the qurbani, Allah also takes away. The animals that he has placed as a ni'mat, a bounty and a favor for you and I. Allah takes it away. I ask you, many years ago when we look back, 
all the, tra the modes of transportation, the horses, the camels. Today they have been replaced by automobiles. Where are these horses? Where are these camels? Allah has taken them away. Where did they go? Allah took them away. Allah took them away. So Allah is going to take away all the animals that he has placed for us to utilize as favors from him if we don't perform qurbani. Look at the lives of the believers. Salat is five times a day. It is a gift from Allah. It is a ni'mat from Allah. And if we don't do it, Allah is going to take it away back from our lives. So much so that it will not matter if we prayed or we didn't pray. And when we investigate our lives, we will see that we don't even miss when we don't pray five times a day. We don't feel no remorse. We feel no sadness. We feel nothing. Because all we know is that we are Muslim and we say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But the ni'mat and the favor and the bounty of, bounty of salat, it's empty from our lives. It's gone and we don't even know. So when we don't utilize the gifts that Allah has given to us, Allah is going to take it away very easily. We won't even know when it's gone. My dear brothers and sisters, when we purchase an animal, when we give our monies for the purchase of an animal, we want the best. We don't want any lame animal. We don't want any animal with any defect. We don't want any crippled animal, broken bone, torn air. We don't want anything like that. We want a perfect animal. And so too, my dear brothers and sisters, because this sacrifice is the greatest ibadat on this day, Eidul Al-Ha, and we want perfection in that, so too we must investigate the other ibadats of Allah, like the Salat, like the Zakat, like the fasting, like the Hajj, and all the other things that Allah has implemented for this Ummah to do, they must also be perfect. There must be no defect in it, because I'll tell you why. The Qurbani is for today. But Salat is also for today. Qurbani is for tomorrow. Salat also. Qurbani is for the third day. Salat also. And Salat will continue. But it has to be perfect. How we pray is very important to Allah. And it should be very important to you and I too. How we perform our Salat. How we give our Zakat. We should not be trying to cheat Allah because we can't. How we perform our fasting, all these acts of ibadat, my dear brothers and sisters, they must be in a state of perfection. Inna Allah ta'ala tayyib. Allah is good. Allah is pure. And Allah likes that. Allah has created insan in the best, most perfect of all ways and fashion. Allah did that for us. Allah granted us with perfection. Subhanallah. We change what Allah has made perfect. Islam Allah has given perfect. We change it. We change our deen to fit our lifestyle. We change the way we look to fit society, our peers, our friends, the girls and the boys who are not Muslims, the schools that we go to, we try to fit in by changing our representation of who we really are. We do it, it's a fact. Our children cannot associate with those children in the masjid. We find new friends for them. We place them in, in such places and institutions that there is no Islam there. And when they start to go astray, we wonder, what is wrong to my child? I've given him everything he wants. I've provided everything for her. I've given them everything. What is wrong to them? Now we are trying to pull back the bull. We are trying to pull them back now. But they have already crossed that bridge. We have to train them from young. 
Ibrahim alayhi salam, he trained his children from very, very young. Very young. And this is where it begins. It starts there. So in our life, the ibadat and the worship that we perform for Allah, there must be perfection in it, my dear brothers and sisters. Qurbani came last year, and it's here again. We would have heard again and again what is the, uh, the objective and the maqsad in Qurbani. What did Allah want from Ibrahim alayhi salam? Allah didn't want his son. No. Allah wanted Ibrahim alayhi salam to prove to him, Allah, that he loves Allah the most. That he will, he will get all the trials, all the tribulations, all the tests. But as they will come, he will still not disobey Allah. He will remain submissive to Allah. He will remain obedient to Allah. He will fulfill the commands of Allah. Last year till this year, I asked myself and you, how much have we fulfilled the commands that Allah has laid down upon us? How obedient have we been from that year until this year? How much more submissive have we been to Allah? Analyze, my dear brothers and sisters, a year has gone. Allah has kept us alive. Investigate your lives and we will see how much have we done to please Allah? How much have we done to gain nearness to Allah? Is it only that Ramadan will come and that's the end? It's throughout our lives, my dear brothers and sisters. This is why Allah keeps putting these opportunities again and again in front of us. For us to take it. For us to take heed. Take note. Look. Open your eyes and see that Allah is doing all this not for himself. Allah has perfumed and decorated the Jannah not for him to dwell in. Not for his angels to dwell in. No. Allah has done that for you and I. For you and I. Allah has done that for us. The paradise is there. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said it that man qala la ilaha illallah dakhala al jannah. Whoever says la ilaha illallah, he has entered paradise. He says, "Give glad tidings to my people." He was telling Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala, "Take my sandal, go out, and any person you meet, tell them." That whoever says La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he will enter into Jannat. Abu Huraira, he went out. Subhanallah, the first man he met was Umar radiallahu ta'ala. He met Umar radiallahu ta'ala. What is the message? Ya Umar, man qala la ilaha illallah, dakhal al Jannah. Whoever will bring iman in the oneness of Allah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is saying, give him glad tidings that he will enter into Jannah. Umar took the sandal and hit him one lash. You going to tell people that? You tell people that they won't do anything? They will only say, la ilaha illallah and hope to enter Jannah. No deeds, no amal. Subhanallah. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala went back to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he began to complain. Umar hit me. The Prophet summoned Umar. Why did you do that? When Umar radiallahu ta'ala an laid down the keys, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam understood what Umar radiallahu ta'ala an was saying. Yeah. So my dear brothers and my dear sisters, sometimes we feel that I am a Muslim, but I am not doing anything that Islam has ordained upon me, prescribed upon me. I'm not doing anything, but I am, I am a Muslim. I'm not eating no khinzir. I'm not eating no pork. I'm not eat, drinking no wine, no alcohol. I am a Muslim, but I am also not praying. I'm also not fasting. I am not giving, I am not doing this, I am not, but I am a Muslim. We will have to pay in the fire of hell for that. Allah has given us the perfect way of life. The perfect way of life. 
And we need to take it, my dear brothers and sisters. We need to accept it. We are the best. We are the best ummah. Allah tells us that in the Holy Quran. So how much obedient or how much more obedient have we become from last year until this year? I leave you to answer that question for yourselves. How much more submissive have we become? Listen to the advice. Listen to the message of a little boy to his father. Don't make things difficult on your parents. Don't make things difficult on your husbands. Don't make things difficult on your wives and your children. No. It's very easy. The father is grieving. The father is hurting. But to break the command of Allah, to break the order of Allah, he rather breaks his own heart than to break the command and the law of Allah. He rather sacrifice his own love than to turn away from the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh my son, I've seen in a vision that I'm offering you as a sacrifice. I've seen that. Tell me, what is your view? What is your opinion about that? And listen to the words of this little boy. To the father. Looking at the grieving face of the father. His heart is aching. He doesn't want to make things more difficult than it already is. He says, oh my father, if al ma tu'mar. Oh my father, do what you are commanded to do. And this message of this 13 year old boy, Ismail alayhi salam, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, is the message and the lesson that all of us are supposed to grasp today. If al ma tu'mar, do what we are commanded to do. This is what Allah wants. Allah has commanded us to do certain things for our benefit. Not as a hardship upon us, but for betterment, for success, not only here, but in the akhirat as well. But it will only come if we do what we are commanded to do. And that was the advice and the words coming from a 13-year-old boy to his grieving father. And my dear brothers and sisters, that message, it remains still today. If we do what we have to do. The message of Ibrahim alayhi salam. To the angels. Thrown into that pit as a little boy again. Look where it started. As a little boy. We don't have to wait until we have become old. As a little boy thrown into a pit of fire. For what? Standing up for truth. Standing up for justice. Standing up for the right thing. Oh my father, I'm not going to worship those things. They took him and they threw him in that pit of fire as a little boy. The angels came and we know the story. Oh Ibrahim, should we intercede on your behalf? Should we beg Allah on your behalf? We will pray to Allah to stop this fire, to take you out from this fire, to save you from this fire. The very one who has caused me to go in there is the very one I depend upon. Hasbi Allah. We heard it last year, but how much have we depended upon it? That has be Allah, Allah is sufficient for me. Whatever problems I'm going through, Allah is enough for me. Whatever hardship I'm faced with, whatever difficulties as they come, Allah is sufficient for me. Hasbi Allah. La ilaha illahu. There is none deserving to be worshipped except Him. Alayhi tawakkaltu. Upon Him do I trust and rely. Wa huwa Rabbul awshil azim. And He is the Lord of the great throne. Hasbi Allah. Bring it into our lives. Let it be part and parcel of our lives that Allah is enough for me. Allah is enough for me. The mother, the wife, Oh, my husband, you are leaving me here with this little baby. You are going away. Is this a command from your Lord? Yes. Allah has commanded me to leave you here. Allah has commanded me to leave my son here. It's not that it's an easy thing for him to do. No. It is a difficult thing. But to break the law of Allah is something he will not do. She says to him, O oh my husband, 
He says, she says, then Allah will not neglect us. Allah will not forsake us. Allah, my dear brothers and sisters, is a, is a focus that we need to put our attention and focus towards. We need to put everything towards Allah. We need to understand that Allah is in total control. Jump high, jump low. Whatever Allah decrees, it's going to come into being. But we don't dig our own holes. Remember that. Don't go and stand up in front of a car and say Allah decrees. No. Allah is in total control. Rely upon Him. Put your trust in Him. Raise your hands. Yesterday was a day of fasting. It was the day of Arafah. What is the day of Arafah about? Dua. How much duas did we make yesterday? Huh? We are afraid to raise our hands. We have become lazy to lift our hands. We don't even want to rattle our tongues if we don't want to raise our hands. How much duas did we make? When all the pilgrims were shouting out, crying out for the entire day in the plains of Arafah, begging Allah, raising their hands and making dua to Allah. Where were we? What were we doing? But it's gone. The day of Arafah, it's gone. It was a day of fasting for us. And we fasted, some of us. But how much duas did we make? Today, my dear brothers and sisters, we are going to do a sacrifice. And in life, sacrifices always come. Tests and trials always come. The sacrifice is in something and that thing which we love the most. What do we love the most? Ismail was the cooling and the love in the life of Ibrahim. Ismail. What is our Ismail? Is it my child? My son? My daughter? Is it my wealth? Is it my wife? Is it my husband? My father? My mother? Is it my education? What is it? My status? What is it that we hold so dear to us that comes between myself and my creator? That is my sacrifice. That is my sacrifice. It comes natural in front of us. We know what we have to do. We know the sacrifice that we have to make. We know it's not about the meat and the flesh and the blood. We know it's not about the, the animal. We know it's not about that. It might be about wealth because wealth is a great sacrifice. Some people don't like to part from wealth. What is my sacrifice? What does it mean to me? Ask yourself. Ask yourself. And when we sacrifice to thee, let that sacrifice come from our hearts doesn't have to be the meat, it doesn't have to be the animal, but it is that very thing that causes pain. It is that very thing that distracts us. It is that very thing that takes us away from our families. It is that very thing that brings pain between myself and my wife and my children. It is that very thing that brings enmity and dushmany between myself and my parents and my brothers and my sisters. It is that very thing that takes us away from our jamaat. It is that very thing that causes us to break friendship, break brotherhood. It is that very thing that we have to sacrifice today. That is our sacrifice. We have to come back to each other. We have to embrace each other. We have to prove our love to each other. But if we can't prove our love to each other, my dear brothers and sisters, how can we show Allah that we love Allah? How? This is our sacrifice. So let it not be for once that we think, I have given X amount of dollars and look at the little bit of meat I have collected. No. Wrong niyat. Wrong intention. It's not about how big the animal is or how small the animal is or how much meat I have gotten or how little meat I have gotten. No, no, no. It's not about that. It's about how big my heart is. How big my heart is. That I have done this with my heart only and only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We hear it, my dear brothers and sisters, but sad to say, it goes through one ear and it comes through the other. When we reach there, it's a whole different story. I beg myself and I beg you, let us not be 
in the places where we are going to slaughter our animals without thinking, retracing, going back to what took place in the place known as Mina, where Ibrahim salam put his son on the ground and placed a knife on his neck. Let that vision come into your mind study. Let it come into your mind study. Listen to the words of that little boy on the ground. Listen to his words. Oh my father, why, why isn't you sacrificing me? Why are you afraid to cut my throat? For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is it that you are afraid you don't have nothing to wrap me in? Is it that, oh my father? Take out my kameez. Take out my shirt and you will wrap me in that. Listen to those words. And remember those words. Why am I afraid to give up the things that I love the most? Why am I, why am I afraid to let go from the wrong things that I'm doing? From the evil things that I'm doing? Why am I afraid? Listen to the words. Put yourself as Ibrahim alayhi salam. Think about the sun on the ground. And let it come into your hearts. Don't let it just be that, oh, we are killing, we are killing animals, slaughter. No. Put yourself as Ibrahim and his son Ismail alayhi salam. And let that thought come into your minds. Let it come into your heart. And inshallah, our qurbani will have more meaning when we do it today, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our, our sacrifices that we will do to please him for his sake and his pleasure. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to give us more so that we can give more in his part. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to bless us, forgive us, have mercy upon us. And may he cause us, my dear brothers and sisters, to always obey his commands, to always depend on him and to rely on him and always know that Allah will never leave us as long as we continue to do what we have to do. May Allah give us good in this world, better in the akhirat, and may Allah save us from the torments of the hellfire. Wal akhir da'wana, and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ya Aid al Bashair, Ya Aid na Hayya, Al Halal Alina, Subhana man sawa, Lafa bil khair wa awal, Aid al Hana mahla, Rabbi.